Namaste to all our viewers there of headlines today. I'm Smita Sharma and this is a very special broadcast in a country with a very rich, in fact, cultural heritage and history, but which has seen conflict over the decades where death, destruction, terror attacks are a harsh reality, where being a woman, in fact, is not easy. She is breaking stereotypes, she's making headlines, and she's all for women empowerment. She's a first lady who, unlike her predecessors, is in public life and is working towards the cause of women empowerment and especially the rehabilitation of the internally displaced people. She is with us today exclusively on Headlines Today. Joining me here is the first lady of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Ms. Rula Ghani. Ms. Ghani, such a pleasure to have you here. Also on this special broadcast, the ambassador of Afghanistan to India, Mr. Shahida Abdali, and the Fiki Ladies Organization President, Ms. Archana Gupta. In fact, all the flow members, the wonderful delegates are here with us on headlines today. They will, of course, have a lot more to ask uh, to the First Lady. Excellency, if I may just begin with, uh, is this really your first visit to India or do you, have you had a previous visits as well? I've been uh, in Delhi twice, but for short vacations. And this was a couple of weeks each. So before I ask you how your country has changed, maybe I should get a glimpse of how do you think India and Delhi has changed since your last visit? Uh, well, I think uh, Delhi is a beautiful city. I'm really glad that uh, you use the liquefied gas, so pollution is, has almost disappeared. I think it's great. Uh, oh, you don't wow. seem to agree. You don't <laughs> seem to agree. Okay. There could be a... <laughs> Maybe I've been mixed feelings about that here. I've been going around in air-conditioned cars, so probably this is the case. <laughs> it, feels, it feels very good inside the car. No, I can tell that it's a vibrant city, but you know, this is only my second day here today. Right. So uh, it's only a visit to Humayun's tomb as well. Yes, this morning uh, I, was, uh, I did my little cultural pilgrimage to the Humayun tomb. It's, uh, it's a beautiful place. And uh, I'm very interested in the uh, irrigation system that you have there. I mean, the system, the water flowing system there. It's a, um, it has a whole history. And uh, fortunately, the guide I had was uh, very uh, uh, knowledgeable. He right. said I was the first person who wanted to visit the garden, really. And uh, not, well, we did visit the tomb, but, uh, uh, you know, it's an uh, unbelievable work of uh, engineering, uh, all these canals and how the water flows. And there is a whole history because uh, various, uh, uh, various uh, regimes, uh, apparently when the British came, uh, uh, they uh, removed certain things and uh, covered others. Anyway, it was a very interesting visit, yes. Now coming back, of course, uh, to the role that you're playing today, Ms. Kani, what does being a first lady mean for you? What does it mean to you? Well, it's, uh, it's first of all a privilege and an honor, something I was not expecting, but uh, uh, it's a responsibility too. Uh, I feel if ever I have to be the symbol of a country, I have to understand the country. And this is why I, uh, my first, uh, 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 my first uh, action was to open a small office where people can come and see me so that uh, I can understand uh, what are their concerns and uh, what uh, there are, are their uh, demands. So um, I'm very tempted to ask, though, mm -hmm. why were you not expecting when President Ghani, of course, took that political plunge? I'm sure you would have thought that one day your husband would go on to become the president of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. We lived a very comfortable life. He was a scholar. He did lots of research. It gave me time to take care of my garden. And uh, I was very comfortable where I was. But uh, if his destiny was to become the president, I was going to support him. So maybe I was in denial. But, but once it happened, it happened. When he did become the president, one of yeah. the first things that he came out and said to the people was he thanked you, the family, for the support and the encouragement. Did it surprise you or has he, is it always been about his encouragement really? I knew that he would make some mention, but I was surprised by the fact that he really uh, went to, uh, to lengths to explain that, uh, um, you know, uh, the role that I played in his life and uh, in the, our life in Afghanistan. And uh, I think uh, he, 
instead of just uh, saying he was showing respect to me. Wonderful. We can maybe perhaps open up the floor for some questions. Are there? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Good evening. The changing role of the first lady in today's diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Really like to know how it is and what we is your views see, on it. Uh, as I said, these are uncharted waters. And so um, I try to see what would be uh, uh, feasible in terms of feasibility. Uh, if, is it possible to meet with women entrepreneurs? Yes, it is. You have chambers and here I am. Uh, it's also, um, uh, I, I try to think what can really help with how I want uh, the country to develop, how I want my fellow countrymen to have new opportunities and all that. So it's basically, I'm very clear about what I'm trying to do. I want to facilitate uh, things in Afghanistan. And uh, I think through and I propose, and if ever it's possible, I do it. Um, you spend a lot of time, in fact, listening into people and their yes. problems. So yes. when they come and speak to you, mm -hmm. what is the kind of hopes that they have? What is the kind of Afghanistan that they want to be built going ahead? Uh, in, in most of the cases, it's the women delegations. I've, I've had some men come and I interact with uh, uh, foreign agencies and uh, NGOs and all that. But... Uh, um, Women are really very happy to have somebody they can come to. Unfortunately, uh, when they go to ministries, often uh, the case is that they have to wait for hours before somebody notices they are there and maybe somebody will see them. Whereas at my office, they, there is a, a, a very clear uh, procedure. They call, they get an appointment, they come. They're told from 10 to 11, I'm there from 10 to 11. So it's very predictable. I am there. I'm listening. I enjoy it. I have right. to say I'm a people's person. So I enjoy sitting and talking with, uh, with the women or with whoever comes. And uh, um, what they expect, uh, well, they, ex they expect to be received with respect and uh, uh, that, and then they say their, what they have to say. Sometimes they're really coming from situations that are very harsh, and they tell me, oh, uh, you've forgotten us, uh, we are in very faraway provinces, no, no services, nobody comes to see us, just because there is uh, a whiff of insecurity, uh, uh, everybody takes the excuse not to do anything for us. But... You know, I can't do much for them, but at least I register what they say. And, uh, you know, I try in other places like here to say this is a situation. So somehow um, I give them back uh, their self-respect. I give them back some encouragement. I uh, encourage them to do things for themselves. Which we are sure means a lot to all of them. Mm -hmm. In fact, before I take in another question, if Ambassador Abdali, I could ask you one question here. You know, uh, Ma'am, of course, came back to Afghanistan in 2002 with President Ghani. From 2002 to now, how has Afghanistan really changed, especially for women? You know, to the outside world, perhaps there are stereotypes that we think of when we think of Afghanistan. But how do you think really has the ground reality in a way changed, especially for women? Well, a lot has changed. Uh, the, the, the very fact today that we see uh, in this delegation of Af Afghan women uh, sitting here, this group representing the Afghan businesses, uh, from the women's side is a change. And this is just a small example. And we see uh, the business in Afghanistan is, uh, you know, uh, are flourishing. And the woman has a great stake and a participation in this business. So uh, the difference, I will conclude, is, is, an, uh, is the difference of scan earth. And I can also tell you for sure, I have a lot of, in fact, uh, friends in Afghanistan, uh, friends who are women, and of course, uh, you know, men and their wives. And they really seem to have learned a lot of Hindi, they, that entrepreneurial streak in them by actually watching Bollywood movies and serials. And I'm amazed. They speak much better Hindi than most of us here in India. So, you know, I think that there's that streak, there's that energy to learn new things uh, very easily amongst women there. Uh, Flo has been working in the field of women's development and mm -hmm. empowerment for the last 30 years. What, in your estimation, can we do together, women to women, for, uh, to in improve relationships and for empowering women in both our countries? 
Well, um, the first step to empowerment is education. And uh, you seem to have uh, already developed uh, uh, training uh, and uh, uh, training sessions thought through how to help women uh, become entrepreneurs, how to help women figure out what are their uh, skills and how they can develop them. And uh, I think uh, uh, in a first step, this might be a great help if uh, uh, we can share that, maybe uh, by you sending trainers to Kabul or by uh, us managing to send a group of women here. That would be, uh, I th I'm thinking along these lines and I'm sure there are other possibilities too. It would be a privilege. Thank you. There's a lot to explore. Uh, yes, please go ahead with the question. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Smita Agarwal, representing the Northeast chapter, which is as far from Delhi as Afghanistan is from here. <laughs> so, and uh, the Northeast has seen a lot of conflict, like your country has. Now both the areas, I think, are returning to peace and normalcy. How do you think you can overcome the challenges and create opportunities for the women and youth in Afghanistan in the global scenario? Thank you. That's a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, as I said, education is the first step. Uh, uh, you're talking about countries coming out of conflict. Uh, one aspect of education will be uh, a peace curriculum, trying to uh, uh, teach again people how to live together harmoniously, how to re uh, resolve conflicts in a, uh, a calm manner, mediation, you know, all that. Um, globally, I'm still not yet thinking globally. I'm thinking still the first step of developing their skills and uh, helping them uh, become uh, self-confident, uh, helping them understand how to do uh, branding, marketing, you know, all the steps of developing a business. Um, there are already a few, uh, uh, a few organization NGOs that do that. Uh, the problem is that uh, um, we have a lot of NGOs that work, uh, each one separately. And maybe a role I can play is to try and bring together all the NGOs that are doing the same thing to kind of come all under one umbrella and do one system. Or maybe licensing, uh, you know, certain skills. Um, I'm only working to th that far. I haven't thought farther, you're asking about the global market. Of course, there are uh, enormous possibilities, but uh, I have not yet reached yeah. them. So this fascinating conversation with Ms. Rula Ghani continues right after the break when we ask her as to what does the First Lady of Afghanistan expect India, in fact, to play a role when it comes to women empowerment in her country? Welcome back. You're watching a special broadcast here on Headlines Today, where we are in conversation today with the First Lady of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Ms. Rula Ghani. In terms of women's empowerment, do yeah. you think the way Afghanistan is moving ahead today, you know, there is a democracy, a thriving yes. democracy. Uh, it is a long-term, of course, proposition to try and restructure organizations. Mm -hmm. But within the, that, in the short term, you can try and work towards women empowerment, that there are ways, of course, to try and achieve it. Sure, sure. I mean, it's just uh, uh, just psychologically to tell the woman you can go ahead and, and uh, you know, if you have an idea, go for it. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to create an institution, go for it. I'll be there. I'll support you uh, vocally. I will, uh, I will encourage you. Uh, yes, they can. Uh, it's 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 a little bit like any. I think a, a great number of you are all mothers here, and when you have a child and you're rearing a child, there is a period where you have to encourage the child. We call it positive encouragement. You have to help them find their strength, and you have to fi help them uh, decide what they want to be in life. And it's a little bit the same kind of parallel. Uh, I, I mean. Uh, I, I sound very ambitious. I'm not going to be able to talk to every woman. But I think this, the mere fact that I will say, you know, uh, you can do it. They will do it. Yes, we can. Yes, Perhaps exactly. there as well. Yes, let's get a question from both oh, of you, please. Ma'am, good evening. 
Uh, my question to you is, mm -hmm. why do you see various opportunities for development of women and youth in Afghanistan and that you can do it? What are the challenges that you think that you face for the development of women and youth in Afghanistan and globally? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, the challenge, uh, there is an expression you use a lot here in uh, India, it's changing the mindsets. Yes. <laughs> so you'll understand what I mean. Uh, but uh, um, in my case, uh, I was married 40 years ago and I came to live in Afghanistan and I lived with my in-laws. So I had a very close knowledge of Afghan culture at the time. Then uh, we went to the States for uh, my husband's uh, PhD doctorate, and uh, uh, we, got, we, we were stuck there with all that was happening at home. Uh, we were told not to come back. So we lived in the States. Uh, when I came back in 2001, 2002, the difference was incredible. And the difference was that uh, society, the fabric of society had been ripped apart. And that's normal because families were uh, divided, some people uh, disappeared, some people uh, went to another country, you know. Uh, it was like the society was in shambles. And when, when this happens, the, the values disappear too. And when values disappear, the first ones to suffer are women. Because uh, uh, people start uh, losing uh, their respect to women. And, uh, you know, and so, all the problems societal that come mindsets from there. are perhaps common to challenges that women face everywhere, be it India, be it Afghanistan, be it elsewhere. Exactly the same challenges. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that in my case, at least I am going to try to revive the traditional values that I knew in 1975. Because in those days, women were respected. Uh, in my husband's family, um, maybe half, I'm talking about extended family, half the women went to work. There were teachers, there was a historian, there was a hospital director. Uh, there were, there were, you know, there were, there was a counselor, uh, you know, it, they were working women. And the others stayed home. But there was no difference between the ones that were home and one. And those who went out to work were never uh, told, oh, what are you doing? You're going out. No. And when my mother-in-law went to the market, she was never harassed. Never. Nobody ever uh, said anything. On the contrary, they would help her carry her things and all that. We have lost the respect for women. And what I would like is to reinstate respect to women, uh, for women within the family, in public places, and within the, uh, the workplace. We'll just take in one last question Her Excellency, we wrap up. Her Excellency, uh, as kids in India, mm -hmm. we all were told about a story of Kabuliwala. Yes. And he was a just man. All, actually, all our human societies were tribally organized, mm -hmm. and so were the Afghans. So what, were, uh, what went wrong in your country? War. War. I mean, uh, uh, conflict. That's what went wrong. And, you know, when the circle of violence starts, it's a vicious circle. It doesn't stop. Because one, uh, one side uh, wins, then the other one uh, fights back, then, it, then a third side uh, comes, uh, uh, comes back. You know, this is war. I mean, I don't know what's happening the world over. I mean, look at the Middle East. I, I really don't understand why all these countries uh, are having all these fights within, uh, within themselves. And that is very, very, it's very easy to destroy. I mean, I come from Lebanon, we had a civil war there. And it takes maybe uh, one bomb to destroy a building. It takes, uh, I don't know, 12 months, 14 months to rebuild it. Absolutely. You know? It takes a long but time. But perhaps conflicts also make people more resilient. And that's why before we end the show, if I may ask you, you are here in India. From India, what is, you know, you're hoping to be a takeaway which can help women in, in your country rebuild? First of all, I can tell them that they can because women in India are doing it. Why shouldn't they? Okay, that's, that's the first thing. 
the second thing is to tell them that uh, you know uh, there are they have support that you are you have indian sisters that want to support you want to help you so don't think that you are fighting this fight just on your own no you have support and uh, what i uh, i also would like uh, would like to say is that uh, women in India have become secure enough that they are uh, participating alongside men in many venues, be it political, economic, and all this. And I think I, I will tell them that this is the future. It's not a war between men and women. No, it's just allowing the woman to become a productive member of society next to the man. Yes, Ma'am, uh, you know, just one last question. Of course, women's empowerment also comes through political empowerment. Yes. Are you hopeful one day Afghanistan will have a woman president too? Uh, it does not need to be uh, a woman president, you know. I mean, there are very good women that can be president and there are very good men that could, could be president. And sometimes it's a question of destiny, who becomes a president and who doesn't. But I think I want women to be able to live their life fully. That's what I want. It's not, uh, and they can live their life fully. Maybe uh, yeah. if their uh, ambition is to have uh, a, uh, a small business, let it be. You know, if they, if their ambition is to become a professor, let it be. If their ambition is to become a uh, a, a president, a minister, or a uh, a uh, a deputy, let it be. You know. Let the woman decide what they want to be. Yes. So let the woman decide is the key. It was such a privileged interaction thank with you. you. Ms. Ghani, may we have a round of applause? And uh, thank you so much, of course, Ambassador Abdali Archana as well for making this interaction possible. So here was, of course, the first lady of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan with wonderful views. And she is like this breath of fresh air. Of course, that country has a lot to be proud about. And I'm sure that women in the years to come will make Afghanistan even more proud. If you have been watching the special broadcast on headlines today, thanks a lot. News and updates continue right after the break.